give all the glory to the Lord. Let us bless each other. Have a peace in your hearts. You are the evangelist who will save this world. With the blessings of firstborn, we will raise and achieve 10,000 things or 237 nations. During this in your field, we've been thinking about the Lord as your master, then you checked the guidance of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, you will achieve. His guidance. Uh, you feel. I will give you the first question. In your walk-up phase for the first time, you might have a motive when you start your walk-up phase. What was your motive for the first time? Some might say that. I've been attending church since I was born. And some might say that they were invited to the church. And others might say that uh, I was just to go to church with my own decision. But everyone has their start. What is the first decision? How was the first decision made to come to church? And there are three main reasons. The first one is that they want to gain their well-being because they are self-centered. They want to receive the blessing. And another say that I want to protect mine and my positions. They're thinking of themselves. If they are not in, they, they just uh, quarrel each other. And the third, and they want to find their final goal. The meaning of their lives, my, my thing, and my future. That's somehow the reason that they started having this walk of faith. There is a reason why they are worshiping the idols. I might say that some church members might do the same thing. They are self-centered in their work of faith. They must get out of this as quickly as possible. In the book of the Bible, the invisible evil spirit tries to attract you to, into this concept of self-centered. So all the better itself is not the better against flesh and blood but against the, things, the evil spirit the invisible things that is the spirit of better field that you are fighting against evil spirits the evil spirits try to break the relationship with others and they might have the conflict inside themselves. They are just fighting. They are having conflicts between the spiritual things and the physical ones. But the genuine thing in the Bible is that the fighting itself is not the fighting against the flesh and blood, but the fighting against the spiritual things. One of the famous and uh, the most blessed received one is Saint Paul. He said that it's all about the, sp the spiritual victory field. So the battle itself is this 
against the spiritual bent of sins and not against the flesh and blood of others. So in your walk of faith, do not think about the Genesis chapter 6, 9, 11 and do not focus on you must get out of this mind, my thing, and my future. Otherwise, you cannot fight in the spirit of that field, then you cannot receive any blessings prepared for you from above. And you cannot enjoy all these blessings from above. So you must fight well in the spirit of the field. First Peter chapter 5, you must be alert, awake. All these grown like a grown lion try to attack you day and night. The first nine says that you must fight against the disabled spirits, the belief of faith of God. So this is the faith of death that you must fight in your field and how you are fighting. Your answers and your blessings depend on how well you fight in the spiritual battlefield. Before being separated from God, we have no choice but to enjoy the blessing of God. But after separated from God, after being brought in the relationship with God, all the saved ones, must gain the victory through the spirit of battle field and by fighting the spirit of battle field they can enjoy these blessings from above so in the main passage today Genesis Deuteronomy chapter 20 God is for us then you must know this God's working so you must fight in the spirit of battle field it's all about the whole chapter the story of this chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 20. So do not be afraid. You must get out of being afraid. Afraid of them. That's verse 1 to 4. And what is the reason that you must be out of being feared? Because God is fighting for, for you against your enemies. So you must not fall into the threat of the fears. So you must be, be ready for fighting the spiritual battle field. The building of the new house then if if it's not being dedicated, it then must go back. And if you are planting a vineyard and has not enjoyed it, and you have to go back. What is the goal of this message? Is you, that means you must be ready for fighting in the spirit of battle too. There is rights, and you must enjoy these blessings and answers from God. To do so, then the, the most important thing is that during this week, in your field or for your whole life, you must not lose hold of this thing, which is that you must recover the spiritual system. Otherwise, you must fight well in the spiritual battle field. You must build up the system. First of all, you must be ready to fight. By the spirit of faith, things that God really wants you to do. The spirit of faith is not the end itself. God will lift up the victorious flags for you. If you win over the Satan in the spirit of faith field, if everything is starting from this. So how can it not enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? So first, he may plunder his house. So you must fight in the spirit of it to, to bind up the strong man. But the more important thing is that if you just um, started fighting, then it you gain the victory because God just um, 
God fights for, for you. So what is the concept of this fighting? What is the most important tool to fight in the spiritual battlefield? It's the words from God, the gospel. So we the words we want to fight against evil spirits. When, when Jesus started his mission, then the Satan tried to put him to, into the test. In chapter 4, and Jesus himself also was tested. But he fought with the word of God in Deuteronomy. And the devil drove away, was driven away, and the answer served him. And the evil spirit left, and the answer served him. So he mobilized the angels of God. So it was the, the, the answer, the blessings from above. To fight in the spirit of built first of all, you must notice the world much longer, was much stronger. The world is bigger. You must know this part. And the history of Genesis, it's, the history is much longer than ours. All the story of the Genesis said the people were in the world and the unbelievers do not know about this respect and they even church members notice that um, the fact that the world is stronger and they were trapped in Genesis chapter 3 and the evil spirit tried to he knows everything about you, you and your level. And when you might be trapped by the scheme of the evil spirits. And the first story in the Old Testament, it disappeared and we do not experience this. That's not at all. It's just happening and it's feeding over in this modern society and your life. And Genesis chapter 6 is of a Nephilim, the character of Nephilim. And think about your life. This is the era of Nephilim. And the world, the character itself is a standard of your life without your knowledge. And the success in Genesis chapter 11, it's about like world is tremendous and marvelous because you do not have any strength and power to win over this world and you just admit that the world is tremendous and amazing. So without your knowledge, you have the standard of this world. You look at yourself, then if you have no power and any strength, then you are just following the world. You must tell yourself carefully and spiritual vision filled and with the power of God, you must fight against this world. I'm talking about Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. It, do you really think that it just happened in the Bible? Don't you think that it's just happening and repeating over again? Even the theologians. Do not know by this fact that this problem in Genesis 3, 6, 11 is repeating. They do not know by this fact so that they cannot 
that as a blind and spiritual group to fill, they are attacked by a new age movement. Then in chapter 6, the culture of Nephilim is attacked by pre-mazing, and the Jewish people build up the Babel, Babel Tower. It's still happening. This world is this modern society in this field. And it's just happening, and it's a weird fact in this world occurring around you. You must have seen this with your spiritual eyes. In the midst of this history, heading to the destruction, we are making the same mistakes, and we are in the cycle, the vicious cycle of this world. How tremendous is Genesis 3, 6, and 11 of Babel Tower. However, big this world is, the world has never been over, won over this gospel, the word of God. And the strongest country was Egypt at the time. But Israel people were on their slavery for 400 years. Think about this slave, uh, being a slave, being a slave for 400 years. They do not have any sense about being a slave. They just think that they are just a slave without any hope. <laughs> they were slaves and their children as well. They do not have any sense about this. But the strongest country, Egypt, the Israel people won over the strongest country with the blood of God. The, the throne of heaven. So with the name of Jesus Christ, we can find the treasure that you build. Then you want to just start fighting that the God will give you this victorious plan towards you. So you must fight against these evil spirits. That's it. If you go against the evil spirit, then you will be safe. In fact, even you take one step to find in the spiritual battlefield, and you are successful, you gain the victory, then you find up the forces of darkness. If you know this fact, then you just even take one step that you are victorious. That your God is with you. And God is fighting for you against your enemies. So whenever you move, then you gain the victory there. Because God is against these our enemies for the sake of us. So the most important thing the word is that God is in ahead of us. So we are guaranteed a victory. You must remember this. So you must look up to the Lord governing this field for you. God is governing this world. You must look up to the Lord. The more you look at the world and the more you equip to the you all you become. You must be gifted with your belief. You must be gifted with his words as well. When you hear his voice, then your face will come out of your hearing his voice. So you must be gifted his words in your field. So during this field, given his words, but grabbing hold of his words, then your field will be stronger and never crumble down. Matthew chapter 7, 
If you follow my worries, it's, his, it's a man who built his house on the rock. Even with heavy rains and winds and snows, then they will never crumble down. It will look just like his house built on the rock. So grab hold of his words, guided by his words. And your mind will be stronger, much stronger than before, even in the midst of persecutions and trials. Your value will be shining in the midst of trials, even with all the heavy rains and snows. And a great problem of covenants in the midst of trials, you will enjoy his words. So when you are equipped with his words in the field, then you will experience God's working. Be confident. No matter what kind of circumstances you are under. And all the evidence were in the only church, even in the midst of persecution, the only church members were in the flow of his words. And time went by, they were becoming more confident. And verse 10 says that they can see the fact that God is with them. They can see the exact guidance of God. It's a believer. You don't need to go to the fortune teller to see your future. That doing this and the statistics say that so many people went to the fortune teller, even church members, because they do not know about their future. But as long as you grab hold of the words, then your future is clear and God's plan will become clear as well. First of all, God will fight for us against our enemies in advance before we fight in the spiritual battlefield. Exodus chapter 17, Israel people were fighting against the Amalek, and Moses went up to the mountains and lifted his hands hand and, and the Joshua and other people were praying they, they just went over this Amalek but when he put his hands down they just lost the game, the fighting then, in the end, they gained the victory in the fighting against this Amalek. That means God is fighting for Israel people against their enemies. He saved us. Not only He's saving us, but also He is with us, guiding us to the victory. The, the bottom line is that in your field, then you must fight in the spiritual battle field that is mandatory fighting. Are you, do you have conflicts in the relationship with others? Do not solve this with your own strength, but fight in, just in your spiritual battle field. Battle field. Do you have any conflicts and problems in your finances? You must fight in the spiritual battlefield first. If you have any problems with the children and you're having a really difficult time with your children and you might have difficulty dealing with all the problems with your children, you must fight in the spiritual battlefield first. And one couple, they are doctors and they are believers and the husband said to his wife, I cannot live with you anymore, we must, we must divorce. And as a wife, she's a doctor as well, and she was 
resolving her husband loves and she did her best but one day she got this offer from his her husband what is the reason she asked and he said no reason and the wife said that this is coming from your spiritual better field and spiritual problems then don't talk of anything about this but pray and after one month they decide not to divorce him uh, continue their relationships that is one of the examples is it all about your fault or my fault? Uh, all the finances, the conflicts in finances, your children, and all the matters in your life? You must find all the forces of darkness beyond, behind all the problems. You must gain a victory in your spiritual field. Then you will gain the victory. When it comes to the missions and evangelism, evangelism, it also needs a space to get filled. You must drive out all these forces of darkness. As a child of God, you can gain the victory by the force of the darkness and getting people out of this battlefield. So when you start with your mission in your special battlefield, whether if this person comes to the Lord or not, you gain the victory. You might easily forget about all the blessings coming from this spiritual battlefield. You must not lose hold of this and remember this then you must fight this in the spiritual way to fill the first that is the first priority you must do and during this week you must first that is the first thing for you to do then all these answers and every blessing will be enjoyed by you and the first thing you see is a spiritual bit of fighting in your spiritual bit of field. Let's grab all these steps and enjoy his words. Secondly, the most important factor is a spiritual bit of field to win over this world. You are guaranteed the victory already. You have been already given this victory. Jesus is Christ. Christ means you achieved the Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. What is the Genesis chapter verse 15? The offspring of a woman crossed the head of Satan. The binding of the forces of darkness. Jesus is the one who binds up the forces of darkness. This fallen angel trying to uh, seduce, attract his enemy evil. And Jesus got separated from God because of this. The sin and all uh, human beings who are sin became sinners. His evil spirit tried to conquer this world. So all the lives were doing this errand for this Satan. They are running the errand for the Satan. They are worshiping idols. They are trying to find religions. That is a result of being a slave of Satan. They were wrestling and they were seized by these spiritual problems. And they were passing all these things, all mistakes down to their next posterities. 
No one can save us, but Jesus Christ came down to this earth to bind up these forces of the airs. The truth is the truth. And God, he solved all the problems on the cross. You must believe in these facts. That is the most important part. When you are doing the spiritual battlefield and fighting in the spiritual battlefield, you must believe this fact that He is the true King, the true priest, and true prophet. When you get into this your building, you do not believe this fact. When you believe in the Lord, then you will see the glory of God. What is the most important spiritual battlefield that you must know? You must believe in what God did, what Jesus did. They are always under the pressure of the Satan and the guilty. Being guilty about and believing in Jesus Christ. You, at this moment, you must accept that you are sinners and you must believe this fact. That God is a true king, the true priest, the true prophet. Sometimes I found us myself that I just following my feeling and my thoughts. If you truly believe that Jesus is done on the cross, then no matter what happens around you, because God just finished everything. Christ finished everything because they do not believe this fact that they are having the conflict and the family and with others. So what is the most important spiritual benefit is that you must have a faith in Jesus Christ who came down this earth as a true king, true prophet, and true priest. John, chapter 16, verse 33, and that with over this world, he proclaimed his victory that I, with, I overcome this world. Jesus said that I overcome this world. So when you believe, as long as you believe this fact that you can overcome this world as well, do not be afraid of the world and anything else because God overcome this world. Do not be afraid of them. And before this first that when you are fighting against enemies, it's all about that you do not have more horses, more than enough. It's all about the fighting in the, uh, against this world. Do not be afraid. Do not be in the dread of, dread of, uh, of them because God, you are believing Jesus Christ the who overcame this world ahead of us. So we will also enjoy this blessing that we can overcome this world. And in the book of Matthew, when he was sending out his disciples and he said that he um, gave this authority of the heaven. In the book of John, chapter 44, that if you have the one who is stronger than this world, he's bigger than this world, he's bigger than the evil spirit. And the evil spirit is just the slowness of this light, it's one again, compared to this the Lord. So you must believe this fact. That is the best battle. That is the battle that guarantees the victory before fighting. That is the most important part. That is the best battle that you must be ready for. You must put the victorious flag in your field. That is thought of a movement that you are ready for this battlefield and you enjoy these blessings in the spirit of battlefield. Then you must gain the victory over this worshiping the Lord. What is the reason that you must grab hold of this message from the pulpit? 
Verse 2 says that when you draw near to the better, the priest shall come forward and speak to the people. Why does the priest shall the priest come forward? That means you must grab hold of the covenant. You must be ready for the better build with his words. So whenever you listen to the filthy messages, it's not just a mere message, but you must make this filthy message is your own. So in the flow of the filthy message, you must be guided by his words. So you must make your own sentence even with one word. So you must make your own message. You, make, you can make your lyrics, you can make your own sentence out of this filthy message, then this person will never lose and the spirits are better filled. So when you gain the over the victory, when you gain the victory and the spirits are better filled, that is all. You overcome everything. So each one of you must grab hold of the flow of his words. Whenever you grab hold of his words, and you will experience the blessing of the throne. So whenever you look up to the Lord, when you are ready for this better build, then all the blessings of the throne will bind up to all these forces that you see happening inside you, and all the conflicts in the business and families and children will be binded up with this filthy message. And in this worship time, will bind up this um, four steps of Tangnesis as a blessing. So you must receive this blessing through this worship time. That is the most important part of your being ready for this spiritual better field. Then you will receive these tremendous blessings. Then, important thing, important part is that you must fight in the end. Don't give it up. Most people just fail to keep doing this spiritual battle field, but you must continue fighting the spiritual battle field. It's not, it doesn't need any kind of um, tremendous start, but you must stay and must survive this spiritual battle field until these, all these evil spirits melt their knees down before you. And let me read this verse 19 and 20. And some temples are kind of, it takes longer time to build up some temples, and some people um, cut up all the trees around them, and God said it to them, do not cut off all the trees around you. You make a tools out of this, then there will be the fruit and your, uh, your food to feed yourself. So you must fight this spiritual field to feel until the end. So until you see this victory, you must find to win over this field and you must build up the systems to win over this world that is the mission house and the regional churches until you see this, the Lord of the second coming. 
then you will see until you will see the conclusion the God will um, give you the victory and the saints nail down their knees on before you so we are guided to the startup movement but one day we find ourselves that we do not have any field the only church that is key to winning over this world is that they do not lose hold of this fighting against enemies and they never lost the hold of this, his words and they just kept doing it, this Tarapong movement they never lost of the field the more you know about this field the more you know the importance this worship service is but we are losing all of this field we must find until the end until we, uh, everyone see this Lord that is that of movement and regional churches and mission homes. until we see build up this 10,000 saints and el for elders you must not lose hold of the sen lose sense of building of this field they are in their own business and their own matters and they might easily forget about this importance of this Tarapang movement but at least once a week they must get into this field that means they must not lose all of this field so they are lost while having no fields around them the only church members the elders they grab all the uh, this words and they as a commander of the spiritual commanders but at this very moment we lost all other fields we must recover this field again you must build up the systems to uh, build up this field then god will give the answer then to see this world has been ready for this fighting then you must be guided by the holy spirit until the end at first you might do this with your own strength but with this humanism it seems like it seems to be working but later on you will find that it's not working at all so you must fight with prayers you might have a burden in your field but do not be afraid because you have a passion for the lord and god will open the door for you to grab hold of your fields then you you can just be in the flow of his words and be guided by the lord don't have any burdens around um, others but be ready for this field and pray then the Holy Spirit will send you the right person for you to open up this field let us come to the conclusion when you are doing this spiritual battlefield the God will open the door and God will open your spiritual eyes then you can see this his tremendous plans the, along with his tremendous plans you will see the timetables for this church and for yourself and for your field and the timetables for yourself and for the church you must check carefully and you might see this person in need of his, his words God will send the right person for you to 
see this fact, then you will experience God is working on you. When you are doing the spiritual battlefield, when you're fighting in the spiritual battlefield, you will um, open your spiritual eyes and you will see this timetable. Then you can just say according to the timetable. And God will prepare, the, uh, uh, prepare others for you to share the gospel. Then you will be used and guided by the hands of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We gain the victory. And ahead of us, you just fight for us against our enemies. Then please let us fight in the end. To the end. Please bless us, Lord, to fight in the spiritual battlefield with the guidance. Exact guidance of the Holy Spirit will experience a real blessing in your guide and your plan. And especially when you are doing this spiritual battle field, and the most important thing is that the messages from the field please work on us, Lord, for us to remember your words forever. I pray in Jesus' holy wonderful name. Amen.